The senior senator from Utah. Madam President, as I offer these remarks on the Senate floor today, tensions between Israel and Palestine continue to escalate to levels that we haven't seen in years. Innocent lives have been lost, and hundreds face injuries. While the global media reports largely paint Israel as the instigator of violence, this portrayal is patently false. It's simply not only not backed up by fact, it's contrary to the facts. Hamas, a US declared, US designated terrorist organization, purposely exploited a nonviolent point of tension as justification to trigger a violent set of conflicts. On Monday night, Hamas launched thousands of rockets into Israeli cities. The intended targets, well, the intended targets were any Israeli person, civilian or not, residential or commercial. The goal, just to create destruction and terror. So to paint this action of armed aggression as anything other than offensive terrorism is disingenuous. And we in the United States and the United States government itself must acknowledge and affirm Israel's right to take proportional action to defend itself against these attacks. What's perhaps even more disturbing and distressing than the media's portrayal of these ongoing events is the Biden administration's ongoing nuclear conversations in Vienna with Hamas's number one supporter, the Iranian regime. Iran, of course, is a well-known state sponsor of terrorism. And it's a major funding source for Hamas. And you know, their, their leaders continue to heap praise on Hamas, specifically for its attacks against Israel. So, Madam President, I Israel is undoubtedly our strongest democratic ally in the Middle East. And together, the United States and Israel have made great strides, tremendous strides, historical, unprecedented strides toward peace and stability through the region, uh, uh, through the Abraham Accords. The Biden administration's nuclear talks with Iran, as well as its posture of willingness to concede on sanctions relief to Iran without any meaningful corresponding gains to U.S. security, undermine both the U.S.-Israel relationship and the new partnerships formed by the Abraham Accords. Madam President, we, we really must stand with our strongest democratic ally in the region. And we need to do that by recognizing Israel's right to self-defense against terrorism. U.S. policy really ought to be geared toward strengthening and not undermining this valued relationship. We certainly undermine that relationship when we legitimize a regime that's funding these very same terrorist activities. I've gotten updates. Some of them are difficult to come by, given that sometimes it's fine, hard to find real-time, accurate facts on what's happening on the ground. In addition to relying on US media, I've relied on media sources from throughout the world. I've also, also spoken to people familiar with the area, and in some cases, uh, people who have lived or currently live in Israel. My friend Ruth Lieberman, uh, a joint citizen of the United States and of Israel, uh, recently commented, just noting the, um, the exasperation that's in the air, noting the genuine source of frustration that she feels. She said, quote, my kids are sitting ducks, and the world thinks we're the aggressors. Ruth is um, one of many Israeli citizens 
one of countless Israeli citizens, subjected to these attacks. It's Ruth and her husband and their children who are among the many whose lives are put at risk every single day as a result of these cowardly acts of aggression. So <clears throat> we can't hesitate to condemn violence when we see it, nor can we, nor should we ever step back and pretend that this is something that can be perceived as a, a situation where language of moral relativism or, or, or even moral neutrality can fairly be applied. On, on some days, that would almost be a good day if you could truly look at both sides, if the mainstream media could look at both sides with language of moral equivalence. But they don't. They don't even do that. Instead, they largely refuse to blow the whistle on the aggressor and heap only blame and vitriol on our ally, which is not the aggressor. There are others who, regardless of whether they use terms of moral equivalence wrongly or, or even unfairly heap blame on Israel and on Israelis, some will resort to a different tactic expressly or, or in some cases implicitly saying, yeah, I, I know this is bad. Yeah, I know it's, it's bad when hundreds, when hundreds and, and then thousands of rockets uh, rain down on Israeli citizens, innocent victims, civilians, often in residential neighborhoods. Yeah, I know that's bad, but uh, then again, Israel has a strong military, in, in part because the U.S. supports its strong military and shares funding and equipment with the Israeli military. Let's think a little bit about the flawed logic there and how truly messed up that is. You know, it's, it's cold comfort to men, the men, women, and children whose lives are put in danger every single day when they've got rockets raining down on them. It's cold comfort to them when their loved ones die or are afraid to go outside even when they haven't done anything wrong. It's cold comfort to them to say, well, at least Israel has a strong military. Look, <clears throat> Iron Dome and David Sling, these great technologies that have been developed with the support of the United States, uh, they provide a, a great source of uh, security and comfort and safety to the Israeli people. And these same technologies um, benefit uh, the American people as well. But let's remember, those technologies are not foolproof. They can't catch every single rocket. And the more rockets that fire, the more difficult it is to protect the citizenry from casualties. So let's never make that mistake of saying it's not that big of a deal because Israel is well fortified and has a strong military infrastructure, and Israel has sophisticated, top-of-the-line, top state-of-the-art equipment. It doesn't excuse, nor can it in any way, shape, or form negate the terrors to which they are subjected. Look, whenever someone aggresses and starts firing on someone else, um, they're opening up a whole can of worms. We can't be good allies, we can't be good global citizens unless we're willing to call out acts of unprovoked aggression, acts of violence, acts even of terrorism. Unless we're willing to step out and call those evil and unprovoked and unwarranted. Um, unless we're willing to do that, we won't have the credibility that we need, not just with our allies, but also with our enemies. We've got to make sure that Hamas doesn't enjoy our support. Not directly, not indirectly, not through our acquiescence or otherwise. My thoughts and prayers go out to the people in Israel. Everyone gets hurt, Israelis and Palestinians, when Hamas engages in violence. 
and then tries to pass that violence off as somehow a defense on their part. Nor can we allow Israel to be castigated as the aggressor, as the instigator of these acts of violence, when it is plainly, clearly not true. Our, I hope our friends in the media and in the Biden administration will acknowledge that. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.